The next thing I have to do is that I have to find the cost distance. How long time does it take from any location to get to my destination? In my case, I'm going to use stations as destinations. So, and um, there's a tool called, or well, there are different tool, tools, but there's one called cost distance, which in a distance calculates this distance. And what it does is basically it looks at, if this is my cost layer here, so this is how long time it takes to move through a cell. Or well, what it does, it, it takes from the center of one cell to the center of the other. So it calculates the average of the two. So if, I'm, if it takes five and seven, well, I will get 12 seconds in all. That's the average of six. So it takes me six seconds to move from the center of this to the center of the armor. So that's the six I got here. Okay. So, and if I'm working at a diagonal, well, the distance is longer. So I just um, multiply by the square root of 2.4 because Pythagoras, so that's the length, additional length. So we calculate the average of the two cells and then if we do the diagonal, we multiply by 1.4. And of course it also means that when we're doing this type of distance calculations, we can only move in eight directions. So from a cell to its one of its eight neighbors. So we will get a bit siggy saggy walking, uh, but that's the limitation of the raster. In addition to calculating the cost distance to our station, it, this tool will also optionally calculate what is called a backlink, and we might as well do that because we'll be needing it in a moment. And what backlink does is that it tells us which cell to move to to get closest to our source, our station. So for every cell, it will say which of your eight neighbors to go into to get closer to our destination, our station. And we'll be using that then to calculate what is a shortest path from a given address to a station in a moment. So going back to our map, I will just uh, look at my thing here and I'll create a new model now so I'll just say new model and this time my model is going to take and use my newly created cost layer here uh, which is there my travel time and I'm then going to use my distance and I'm going to use my cost distance here. So note there is a backlink tool but this option also generates a backlink. So we just take this one and it has my input costs. This is my cost. I also need my stations because they are my source. So my train stations there. I also want them in. And they are then my input, like that. Good. Now let's go in and say that this one is going to be my cost distance, yeah. And this one down here should be called my backlink train station. Oh, and I prefer to have them as TIFF files. Let's add the .tiff, otherwise I'll be in Israel grid, and I don't like that. So, I've got this part of my model, uh, just make it look nice, and um, I can run it. I, I'm only interested in looking at this one. Uh, the backlink is only for doing calculations in a moment. So. What it's doing now, it is calculating from anywhere in my area how long time it will take to go to the nearest station. So if I just close this one down a moment and zoom to my layer, like this, 
we can see that and ah, get rid of the roads network. Oh no. Um, we can see that out here it's where it takes the longest time to get to the station and here it's the shortest time and if I click on a location like out here it will take me uh, uh, my I don't want addresses I want my oops where is my layer um, down there my cost distance layer um, I just ask it to give me not all layers but this my visual layer and then I can click here because that's what I can see at least so here we have my cross distance and um, so this is the number of seconds it would take me to get to the station from this location and if I was down here it would only take me uh, 15, uh, 1500 seconds to get to my station and if we look a bit close at this layer we can also see that um, look at this area here and if I add my roads there we can see how the structure out here that this follows with the roads and how it spreads out from the bridge here so it again it follows down the roads so the time is related to our road network. So we now know how long time and we can click anywhere and it will tell us how long time it takes to get to the station. However, what we want to do is that we want to, um, to know what way to go from a given address. So we will just extend our model a wee bit so we bring up our model again and we will now introduce the next tool which is our um, down here our cost path so that's the one that generates our path that we're going to move through and what we're going to do is that we're going to use our cost distance that is our Cost distance and our backlink, that is our backlink, and then we want our addresses. So we need all our addresses, we only want our street address. So we'll take this one in and connect that to our here. Yeah. Good. So my model is ready to run. I don't want to create a path from each address in Copenhagen to its nearest station. That would be not only time consuming, but will also um, be a bit difficult to look at. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select an address I want to investigate. So um, let's take one of the addresses out here in Arma and uh, use our selection tool and say let's select this one is quite alone so I can hopefully select it so, so now this one is selected and as you remember if there is a selection set our map is generally honoring it so it will now only calculate the path from the selected uh, address so if we look in our path here it will say it will look at my addresses it will only take the selected one. Um, it, will use, it will identify it by its road code. We might as well identify it uh, by its object ID. It will use my cost layer and my backlink and it will create a new raster layer called here. It will be my path. So I'll run it and we will see which way to get to the nearest station. So it's done it, and I'll add my, this to my display. And we can now see that if I get rid of some of the other layers, probably this the road layer there, what we're going to do is that we're going to go down here, across here, over here, 
and up to our station. So that is the shortest path from that address to a nearby station. So we have done our cost layer. So we, the whole principle of these things is to first create a, if I go back to the previous idea, create a cost layer. So how long time does it take to move through a cell? Then I'll find the cost distance from any location in my area and the so-called backlink, which is which way to go to the nearest cell from any cell. On top of that, I can then ask it to calculate a path. And typically what I will do is that I will select a address and then run my path model from that. I can just do that again. So I select this address here, if I can select that and uh, run my model again. Oh, yeah, well, it, I don't only need to run this last part. So um, I just have to select it. Uh -oh. the, select it and then I can say run. Where's my run there? And it will just run this part. I don't have to run the whole model. I only need to calculate the path. So now you can see that from this address, it will go this way to get to that station. So that is the use of this uh, cost path that will find me the shortest direction to use. And um, that's about it for about using cost or time as a measure of distance and then compensating for the fact that we can't move as the crow flies but has to follow roads and etc. So I hope you like this video series. Bye.